Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. In stories about people meeting God, one surprising event happened recently in America. Imagine a very rich person saying they met God right in their home. That rich person is Elon Musk, the guy behind Tesla and SpaceX. He's famous for his big ideas and inventions. Now he's saying he met with God in his house. This news is going to make a lot of people, especially Catholics, really interested and maybe even shocked. It's a big deal because meeting God is something most people only dream about. So, when someone as influential as Musk says it happened to him, it gets everyone talking. It makes us wonder about the mysteries of life and what's beyond what we can see and touch. What's grabbing attention in Elon Musk's story is the jaw-dropping claim that he received something extraordinary from Jesus during their encounter. And even more surprising, he's still holding on to it to this day. To ensure that as many people as possible see this video, kindly take a moment to share it and subscribe to this channel. May this message touch your heart and help bring you closer to the conversation of souls and the conversion of sinners. If you believe so, please type Oman. Elon Musk, who is famous for his work in science and technology, recently told a personal story that goes beyond just the regular stuff we experience every day. It happened one night while he was at home when he had a dream that would change how he sees the world. In his dream, Musk found himself walking through a dark and thick forest where it was hard to see anything. He struggled to find his way for about 10 minutes, feeling lost and unsure. But just when things seemed bleak, he noticed a faint light shining from a tree in the distance. Curious and drawn to it, he followed the light, guided not only by its brightness, but also by a pleasant smell in the air. As he got closer, he realized that the light was coming from Jesus Christ. It was a moment that felt special and powerful, like being wrapped in a warm and comforting hug. This dream had a big impact on Musk. It made him feel more connected to his spiritual side and made him think about faith in a new way. It reminded him that there are things beyond what we can see and touch that can have a big influence on our lives. Jesus touched the head of Elon Musk and said something that Musk could not believe. Then Jesus gave him an item. But the most important thing here was that after waking up from the dream, Elon Musk still held that item. Now, the message will be shared with all of you, beloved children. I bless you to live in fraternity according to my will. You have to go in harmony with your siblings and always take my love with you. You have to work according to my will, follow my law, and lead a morally upright life. The results of our holy life come from the blessings of my Holy Spirit. Because you understand that you are nothing without me, I will talk about something really important coming up in 2024, especially for Catholics. But here's the exciting part. Along with this event, there's talk of a wonderful miracle happening right in your own homes. My dear children, imagine this. As you're going about your usual day at home, you might suddenly feel a special presence around you. It's like a feeling of peace and goodness filling the air, making everything feel more sacred and special. You might notice little signs of this miracle, like the soft glow of candles, making shadows dance on the walls, or the lingering smell of incense that reminds you of prayers. Some might even feel a deep sense of calm and happiness, like you're being hugged by something loving and powerful. However this miracle shows itself, it's going to be something amazing and will remind us all of how strong our faith can be and how close God is to us, especially in our homes. So, when you experience this extraordinary moment, let it fill you with joy and remind you of your strong connection to God. As the final day of October approaches, I urge all of you who are my beloved children to join together in a special act of devotion. At 8 p.m. on that day, gather beneath the sacred altar within your homes and take up the Holy Bible to read. This simple yet profound gesture is not without purpose. It is a request made with the promise of a miracle awaiting those who participate. By coming together in this collective act of reverence and faith, you open yourselves to receiving the divine blessings bestowed by me and my mother. So, 
mark your calendars and set aside this momentous occasion to unite in prayer and contemplation. Let the words of the Holy Scripture guide you as you prepare to welcome the miraculous gifts that await. Be true witnesses of my Holy Spirit, beloved children not half-heartedly, but completely. You must always carry my love with you and travel in unison with your siblings. Remember to love God and send love to God. The talk about Elon Musk meeting Jesus brings up a lot of different thoughts and feelings. Some people might doubt it, while others find it interesting. It's important to think carefully about stories like this, but it's also cool to think about how it might change someone's beliefs and how they see the world. Elon Musk is famous for his work in technology and science, so when he talks about meeting Jesus in a dream, it's kind of surprising. It makes us think about how science and faith can mix. It's like a new way of looking at things that challenges what we usually think about spirituality in today's world. Some might see Musk's story as a real spiritual moment, while others might see it as something that just represents his thoughts and feelings. But either way, it shows how people everywhere are searching for meaning and a connection to something bigger than themselves. In a world where we often focus on material things and doubt what we can't see. Stories like this remind us that there's still so much we don't understand about life. John 2 to 1, this, the first of his miraculous signs, Jesus performed in Cana of Galilee. He thus revealed his glory and his disciples put their faith in him. The reason that these higher beings would hold a simulation is to see what happens. They don't know what happens. Do you believe in God? The famous businessman Elon Musk has recently issued a statement that might completely change how we think about the future. Musk firmly believes that the long-discussed idea of the rapture is on the horizon, and his declaration is closely tied to certain Christian beliefs. But what evidence or reasoning has led him to this conclusion, and how will it affect our society? Join us as we take a trip into Ellen's mind in a controversial statement about the rapture. Exploring the rapture in Christian beliefs, the idea of the rapture, as imagined by certain religious groups, presents a captivating scene of a grand gathering between departed Christian souls and those still. Drawing inspiration from ancient scriptures, this concept rooted in the Greek term harpazo, meaning to snatch away or seize, as found in the Bible's first epistle, to the Thessalonians embodies the expectation of a supernatural reunion that opposes earthly limitations. In theological discussions, the idea of the rapture stands out as a relatively modern addition to Christian beliefs, originating from emotional debates in the 1930s. Unlike traditional Christian teachings, it gained importance primarily within fundamentalist circles in the United States. The attraction of the rapture lies in its celestial appeal captivating the imagination with its promise. Beyond being seen as a very cosmic event, the rapture holds deeper significance as a potential pathway to divine unity or a gateway to the permanent bliss of heaven. It offers believers a glimpse into the possibility of exceeding earthly boundaries and experiencing the splendors of the afterlife. The interesting concept of the rapture, a theological wonder, arouses lively discussions about when it will occur and the close return of Christ. Among these discussions, the pre-tribulation view stands out greatly. This belief carefully separates the rapture from Christ's second coming, considering a seven-year tribulation period before Christ's victorious return and the beginning of a blissful thousand-year reign known as the Messianic Kingdom. This theory finds its roots in the detailed biblical analysis conducted by John Nelson Darby in 1833. However, the landscape of beliefs regarding the rapture is diverse and dynamic. Spirited debates remain within evangelical circles, with some advocating for the established pre-tribulation posture, while others embrace an alternative viewpoint known as the post-tribulation rapture. According to this perspective, the sequence of events in the grand prophetic narrative unfolds differently. The ongoing fervor within evangelical discussions underscores the captivating nature of this subject. Notably, not all Christian groups adhere to the idea of the rapture. 
Some interpret the biblical gathering mentioned in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, clearly using the term rapture altogether. Instead, they predict a celestial assembly with Christ immediately after his second coming, rejecting the idea of a crucial portion of humanity, enduring an extended tribulation. The richness of these discussions highlights the complexity and depth of belief systems within Christian theology. Elon Musk's controversial views on Jesus and spirituality. In a recent casual chat with the Babylon Bee, the mysterious Elon Musk delved into the interesting concept of the upcoming rapture. But what truly captivated the audience was his wonderful opinion of Jesus Christ and his religious beliefs. Musk, the visionary mind behind Tesla, didn't just dismiss the question of whether he accepts Jesus as his spiritual guide is a complex one. Instead, he delved into a serious discussion, drawing parallels between his own beliefs and the timeless wisdom imparted by Jesus. With thoughtful behavior, Musk highlighted the teachings of Jesus, promoting the importance of concepts like turning the other cheek, forgiveness, and the golden rule of treating others with the same respect we desire for ourselves. He particularly resonated with the timeless advice of love thy neighbor as thyself, seeing it as a fundamental principle for a harmonious society. What's truly interesting is Musk's optimistic outlook on the idea of Jesus potentially saving people. His response exudes a refreshing sense of openness and curiosity as he nonchalantly remarks, sure, I'll be saved, why not? Despite his baptism as a child, Musk openly admits to grappling with profound existential questions about the existence of God, faith, and the narratives surrounding Jesus in the Bible. While he may not consider himself deeply religious, Musk's contemplative nature has led him to embrace prayer, hoping for the opportunity to engage in meaningful discussions on these profound topics. For Musk, these conversations hold immense significance, not just on a personal level, but for humanity as a whole. In a world often overshadowed by adversity, Musk sees the potential for such dialogues to serve as beacons of hope, spreading joy and fostering understanding among people from all walks of life. As he envisions a future where good news is not just a rarity, but a universal norm, Musk's optimism shines through. He believes that embracing discussions on spirituality and morality can be viewed as a collective achievement for humanity, transcending geographical boundaries and cultural difference. Opposing beliefs about the rapture ignite many different thoughts and beliefs among Christians. At the heart of this conversation, the question of where those who experience the rapture go immediately. Some, known as dispensationalists, firmly believe that this event transports Christians straight to heaven's gates, welcoming them into the divine presence. Catholic scholars, such as Walter Drum in 1912, agree with this view. They also see the event described in 1 Thessalonians 4 to 1 to 17 as a journey to heaven, considering a celestial reunion and a connection with the divine and the beauty of the heavens. A unique perspective on the rapture holds that it might occur not at the beginning or the end of the tribulation, but right in the middle of it. This perspective is commonly referred to as, as the mid-tribulation viewpoint. According to this belief, Believers will initially experience difficulties during the tribulation. However, just before the situation worsens significantly during an intense period known as the Great Tribulation, characterized by God's heightened anger, believers will be taken up to be with Jesus. Supporters of the mid-tribulation perspective often cite a passage from the book of Daniel. Specifically, chapter 7. This chapter contains a prophecy that predicts a specific period of hardship for God's followers, mentioning a duration of time, times, and half a time, which is interpreted as 3.5 years. These believers hold that right in the middle of this period, a significant event known, the abomination of desolation will occur. During this event, they believe that the Antichrist, a figure representing ultimate evil, will commit a profoundly disrespectful act within a sacred place known as the Temple in Jerusalem. This unique perspective offers a fascinating lens through which to contemplate the timing of the rapture, particularly when examining the intricate prophecies outlined in the book of Daniel. 
While it may not boast widespread acceptance, the intricacies of how these prophetic events might interconnect during the tumultuous period known as eschatology, the study of end times according to religious beliefs, are undeniably captivating. Imagine delving into the concept of the pre-wrath rapture as if unraveling a mystery novel scenario where righteous souls are caught up to meet Jesus amidst the chaos of the tribulation just before his triumphant return. This viewpoint isn't merely a theological concept, but a narrative rich in symbolism and anticipation, drawing parallels to ancient texts and modern interpretations alike. Central to this fascinating perspective, it is the notion of Daniel's 70th week, which serves as a dramatic countdown to the climax of human history. Within this prophetic timeline, believers endure trials and tribulations similar to the rising action of an epic saga. The imagery evoked is vivid a world plunged into turmoil, with the forces of good and evil locked in a cosmic struggle. As the narrative unfolds, the Great Tribulation emerges as a pivotal chapter, characterized by the emergence of a sinister figure known as the Antichrist. This embodiment of malevolence looms large, casting a shadow over the fate of humanity and heightening the tension of the unfolding drama. But amidst the darkness, there is a glimmer of hope the promise of the rapture. According to this perspective, it serves as a beacon of light amid despair, offering solace to believers enduring the trials of the end times. It's a moment of divine intervention, a turning point in the narrative that heralds the beginning of the end. And yet, the story doesn't end there. Following the rapture, the stage is set for a cataclysmic showdown as God's justice is unleashed upon the world. The imagery is apocalyptic seals are broken, trumpets sound, and bowls are poured out, signaling the climax of the cosmic conflict and the dawn of a new era. In essence, this perspective on the pre-wrath rapture isn't just a theological concept. It's a gripping tale of redemption, resilience, and divine intervention, woven through with symbolism and suspense. It invites us to ponder the mysteries of the universe and contemplate our place within the grand scheme of existence. Thank you for watching till the end of our video. Our brothers and sisters, without fear and with more faith than in the past, let us continue in faith. Stay blessed and continue to pray for God, to show all of us his graces and blessings. God bless us and protect us. Amen.